Before we get into the review, I just wanted to mention um, Silent Thunder Ordinance did give me a bit of a discount on this item. I didn't get it for free. I did have to pay for it, but they gave me a nice discount coupon code. They also provided me one for you guys, so you can get that down in the description to knock a few dollars off of this thing. I did not let that affect my review. Um, I do mention what I dislike about this, and it's pretty explicit, but overall it's a very unique thing, and I like it quite a bit. So yeah, if you're interested in that, link to the coupon codes down in the description. Check that out and go pick one up if you like it. Hey everybody, Jake here. And today I've got something a little different to take a look at actually. Um, this is called the Scalpel Dashi. This is by a company called Silent Thunder Ordnance. And it's a very, very interesting little knife. Um, there's a few things that differentiate it from most knives. Number one is the fact that it uses a scalpel blade. So these are replaceable and removable, and they're great for like little hobby projects and stuff. Extremely sharp. Not practical for everyday use, but as far as small cutting tasks go, these things are great. Um, they slice through most thin material with very, very, very little effort, and they're extremely sharp. So keeping all that in mind and taking it into the perspective of a very, not single-minded use, but a very specialized tool, We'll go over a review for this, and I'm going to kind of, you know, do a review from the point of an EDC carry of it. So let's go ahead and get into it. First up, size comparison. So this is tiny. This is this is little. Um, I didn't think it would be this small when I got it, but this this thing's, it, it's, it's small. I can literally get two fingers on the handle. Um, but let's go ahead and compare it to some other pocket knives and... That way you can see a little bit better. So here it is up against the Victorinox Classic. So when the Victorinox Classic is about half your size, you know it's a small knife, especially for a fixed blade. Here it is against the Spyderco Dragonfly, which just completely destroys this thing. And I figured I'd go ahead and get a small flipper in here as well. This is the ZT-0450CF. See if I can get it in frame there. Yep. So again, this is extremely, extremely tiny, and we'll go ahead and compare thickness as well, just so you guys can see what we're dealing with. That is the thickness of the sheath, and that is the thickness of the handle. It does taper down. All right, let's go ahead and get into what I like about this thing. Quite a lot here, actually. Um, number one is going to be the size and weight. It's tiny, it's super, super small, and I love that. Um, I have been carrying this just as an EDC tool for a couple weeks now, and it just slides right in your pocket. That's extremely, extremely nice. Um, I don't notice it when it's there. It's super duper lightweight, and it's diminutive. It's it's fantastic to carry. Um, no clip or anything like that. There is a keychain hole, which is a fantastic addition. You can attach a lanyard to that if you want to. Just pull it out of your pocket. Might actually do that now that I'm saying that out loud. Um, you could attach it to a keychain or you can attach it to a necklace. This would be a great neck carry knife. Um, it's very small, so it would, you know, wouldn't really get in the way of anything. I think that'd be a good option. The design on this is really, really cool. Um, I love geometric shapes and designs, so this this is just right up my alley as far as the angles and everything on here. The back side is flat for the most part. We'll get to that later. Um, but there's rounding or an angle at almost every corner that's exposed creating a very, very interesting design that I like a lot, actually. There's a ton of color options for this as well. So here I have the, it's called the Chameleon Skin. It is, in most lights, a green finish. However, in some lights you can see down here it's purple. Uh, up here it's green. It can be gold, it can be blue, it can be a ton of different colors depending on the lighting situation. And I'll go ahead and put in here some clips of other lighting situations so you can see kind of what color it is outside. You know, or in a normal kind of fluorescent room. Things like that. So it offers a very, very unique color and that, that's probably what pulled me the most to this. I've got some red right there. That's kind of that's kind of cool actually. So this is one of the colors. They offer a couple other colors as far as um, 
the basic kind of set I, is what I would count it as goes. Um, they offer this. They offer one called a Distressed Graphite. It's kind of off black. I, I kind of wish I had that one to compare as well, but I wanted a consistent color across mine. And you can mix and match sheaths and handles. You don't have to get the same color handle as you have a sheath. You want a Distressed Graphite handle and a Chameleon Skin sheath? Sure. You know, or you don't have to get a sheath at all. It's completely up to you. They also offer it in sapphire blue, which is a very, very striking blue finish. It is very, very vivid. If you like blue, I think you enjoy that a lot. Then they offer diamond black, which is a bit more um, stealthy. It's kind of a metallic finish, kind of like all these are, I'm guessing, because this one's very reflective. But it's kind of a stealthed out black color. Now, in addition to that, they also have something called a metal composite. They have bronze and copper, which is kind of a brown and red. I don't know if I necessarily, well, it's kind of coppery. Um, those, I believe, are a metal. Now, much to my surprise, when I got this, it was not metal. I talked about the size, the size and the weight a minute ago. It's very, very light because it's made out of what I'm guessing to be some sort of plastic. It feels very durable. I'm going to go ahead and add that in there. But I was kind of off-put at first. I was like, I really expected metal, and I was kind of disappointed. But the more I carried it, the more I was like, well, this plastic is actually a really good choice because I got this really cool finish, and it doesn't weigh anything. It's 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 great. And now, where the actual blade goes and everything, that is, of course, you know, going to be steel, so you can sit the blade in there. But that's about it. It's, it's extremely lightweight, and you can get it in a bunch of different color options. They fit a ton of different blades. So right here, I have a number 11 blade. They also fit <clears throat> 6, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 40. Um, mine didn't come with a blade. I don't know if that was, you know, what was up with that, if that was an issue, or if maybe they don't come with them normally. Um, because they mentioned kind of getting, you know, including a blade on their page. I'm not sure exactly. You can get a blade from them. You can get a 10-pack for $2, which is a bit expensive, but they kind of tell you that. Or 5-pack for $2, my bad. However, you can get something like this. I'll go ahead and set this right here because I'm going to go ahead and show you how to change the blade. Um, this is a 100-pack of surgical um, scalpel blades. comes in a little package like this. I got this for like $9 off of Amazon. So you can probably see here, if I can get the focus a little bit, that this blade has, and stay focused, that would be nice. This blade has a little bit of wear on it. I've used this blade quite a bit, so it's time to take it off. What you'll want to do is push this bottom piece right out to the side, and then you just kind of lift up. Now, I don't know if this is standard across other scalpels, but that's kind of what I did here. Um, there are no instructions, so it's, if I'm doing it wrong, let me know, but I think that's the correct way. It works just fine for me. Go ahead and open up your other scalpel blade. These are sealed pretty well, and I don't blame them because these things are extremely sharp. And I, I can't stress that enough. Be extremely, very freaking careful with these. Uh, they will cut you open if you are not careful. So once you've got that, you can see here it kind of has a little slot where the blade goes, and the blade has a little groove there. So you put it on there, and you just kind of push it down, and it'll click into place. And there you go. You have a brand new fresh blade. Good to go. And I still have 98 more of them. So, so yeah, I haven't replaced the blade on this for a couple weeks. I was going to replace it a couple days ago, but I figured I'd wait until I did the review. That way I could show you guys on camera. Very quick, simple process. Um, I Now that I have the blade on, I do have a little bit of trouble going into the um, sheath, but that's you know, probably just because of the shape of blade I got or something like that. No issues, and I haven't really been poking the handle or anything, so that's nice. The fit in the sheath is very, very tight. It's wonderful. You can see there is a bit of a gap, but it's not much there. Um, you can open it one-handed if you'd like to. You can kind of push in this little dip and get it open. Um, I normally open it two-handed because I'm really paranoid about that scalpel blade, but that's just me. But overall, it's you know, a pretty impressive little piece. Let's go ahead and get into what I'm kind of neutral towards. All right, so first thing, the price. Um, it's not that expensive, honestly, now that I've carried it, but at first I was a little concerned, and when I first opened it and I found it wasn't metal, I was very concerned. But over time, the price has become a lot more justified to me. 
So what you're looking at price-wise is $32 to $40 for the handle, which is this part. You don't have to get the sheath. You don't have to get a handle if you want. You, if you just want the sheath, just grab the sheath. I don't know what you do with it, but you know, freedom. It's America. You can do whatever you want to. Um, so just the handle is going to be thirty-two to forty dollars. Now this depends on what color you're getting. Now, the diamond black is the cheapest, all the way up to the copper and bronze composites. Those are the most expensive. The chameleon skin is, it's kind of in the middle somewhere. It's around thirty-four for the handle on this. And then the sheaths go from $16 to $20, depending on what finish you get. Now, you cannot get the sheath in the copper or bronze finish. Just to let you know, just to tell you right now, you can't do it. Now, that price is a decent bit for, you know, something so small. But if you have a use for this, grab it. One thing that I found very, very useful for this, um, at least this particular blade shape, is um, every now and then I'll widen the, the feeds on a fountain pen. Um, oh gosh, I'm forgetting the word for it now. I'll, I'm sorry. I'll widen the channels on a fountain pen feed. There we go. Because I already used the word feeds. I don't know what I was talking about. Um, so this blade is extremely thin. And I'm not joking when I say that. It is extremely, extremely thin. So it's perfect for that. I can run it along, stretch it out just a little bit. Correct my ink flow. It's perfect for that. Opening packages and stuff like that. Little tape pieces. Boom. Right through it. It's great. And you kind of have to take that specialization into the price as well. So I think it's I think it's fair. Um, I wish it had been a little cheaper, but I, I feel that way about a lot of stuff. But I think it's a fair enough price. Now the material. So I covered the fact that this is plastic, and I wanted to include this in the neutral section because while I love it in this plastic, um, I can understand some people wanting it in metal. I will say, though, I think if it were in a metal, one, you're not going to get this kind of finish on it. And two, I feel like, if, especially if it's a softer metal, like aluminum, it's going to get dinged up really bad. Steel would be too heavy. So I think it's a, I think it's a fine material. But eh, as far as durability goes, it's kind of up in the air. It's, it's, it's up to you. You can get one of the metallic finishes and, you know, go from there. But uh, I think I'd, I'm going to stick with the plastic. I like the weight. The feels pretty nice. It, I mean, it feels kind of like plastic, but not in a bad way. They do a lot of texturing on this finish as well, so it feels very, very nice. It's not too slick. It's kind of, it's got a little bit of a texture to it, so it's it's pretty nice. Let's go ahead and get into what I dislike about it. Okay, not a lot here, but there is some stuff, and I've got to talk about it. So first up, the finishing on it. Not the color. Love the color. It's freaking amazing. I already covered that. The finishing as far as the quality. So I pointed out that most of these edges are rounded. There's no real sharp points. There's one here and one here. But that's about it. Um, most of this stuff's rounded off and it's very, very pleasant to hold in your hand when it's closed. When you open it, all of like these corners here are very sharp these corners here are they're probably the sharpest ones on the whole thing and that's not a huge issue if it you know didn't because you don't you don't have it open most of the time to be honest let's just be honest with ourselves you don't have this out of the sheath most of the time if you bought a sheath and a handle but when it's closed you'll notice some unevenness here now that means that sharp corner you can hit it at any time so this actually lines up flush with the top on this end. On this end, it lines up with the bottom, which I found interesting. There is, there's a little bit of a sharp corner from the handle here, but it's not too bad. You don't really get one from up here. But right here, that's 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 not good. Um, the sheath is thicker than the handle. I don't, I'm don't. i sure that has something to do with it. Uh-oh. Um, but it, it kind of bugs me. Thought I'd put it out there. I'm a stickler about fit and finish, and for the most part, it's really good on this. But that is not great. Um, where the actual steel peg fits into the handle, there are some very, very small gaps, but I've experienced no wiggle or anything, so that's just fine. It's really just that sharp corner here, and the sharp corner here, and the unevenness. If those were fixed, I wouldn't really have an issue with it, and it may be a design you know, aspect or something like that that they couldn't change. 
but it's there at least on mine that's about all i dislike about it was just those two little things but they did bug me quite a bit all right on to the conclusion so what do i think about this um i i love this i've been trying to find a reason to carry this every day uh like most knife guys i don't i don't have something to cut every single day but you know every other day yeah i do um and this is just great for it it's you can do two fingers on it i usually do three and just kind of choke up right here to where i have that little slip of blade pointing out and then i'll go do whatever i need to do and for precise cutting it's perfect it is absolutely perfect i think using a scalpel blade as an edc thing was just a genius idea for sturdiness no but then again you're not getting this because it's sturdy i mean look at look at the size of it compared to an you know another knife let's just go ahead and grab the spider crescento fonte 3. if you want a knife you're gonna carry this if you want an edc tool that can be used for cutting open light small things or precise cutting grab this it's fantastic probably the closest comparison i can get size wise is going to be the victorinox classic blade but to be honest it doesn't even come close in cutting potential the steel on this is awful it doesn't stay sharp very long this thing razor sharp whenever you want it you can replace the blade it's easy it's fast it's simple and that's that's fantastic that's what I like the most about this probably is the simplicity of it it has a gorgeous finish very unique design but there's nothing to really go wrong here there's no issues with with any looseness or anything the only thing that might happen is your blade could pop off but if you're using a scalpel blade hard enough to get it to pop off this handle you have other issues so just you know use it how it should be used and i think it's perfect i love this thing um, i've been carrying it quite a bit to be honest and just the size and weight of it has it replacing a lot of the stuff that goes in my pockets i carry my victorinox with me everywhere anyway so this usually replaces my knife. It's narrower than most of them. It's not really that much longer than any of them. And it's super, super lightweight. Like, I, I can't stress enough how light this thing is. I don't have any exact measurements because I don't have a scale and they don't list it on their website. But it's maybe an ounce. It's it's super, super light. It's, it's ridiculous. In conclusion, before I ramble on too long... This is a very interesting EDC option at a very fair price. And if you have any practical use for this that you think you can get your money's worth out of it, I say get it. Um, speaking of, I will have an insert at the beginning of this video mentioning this as well. But I'm going to bring it up at the end as well. Um, Silent Thunder Ordinance, I got a bit of a discount on this. I did not get it for free. I did pay for it, but I got a bit of a discount. They were kind enough to also include a discount code for me, for you guys. So I've included that down in the description. So you can go ahead and get, use that to get a little bit of extra money off of these. So if it's something you're interested in, feel free to use that coupon code, knock off a few bucks, and save yourself a little bit of money. And don't forget to pick up a ridiculously large box of scalpel blades off of Amazon for super cheap or you know wherever you get your scalpel blades from. I'm not going to judge you. But thanks for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to check out my other stuff. And let me know what you think about this and if you have any unique EDC carry options that you carry with you that are a bit mm, unconventional. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys. Bye.